After the announcement of the incident, with the timely presence and selfless efforts of firefighters, operations and other teams were present at the scene and fire was completely extinguished in less than 2 hours and 20 minutes. The accident, which took place in one of the crude oil storage areas of the offshore oil company, caused financial losses, including the loss of some oil due to burning, the destruction of various parts of the floating roof seal, equipment and cables of instrumentation. Fire extinguishing in time prevented the destruction of the tank wall, boil over, violent expulsion of burning fluid to the surrounding areas and fire from spreading to other tanks. In floating roof tanks, to prevent the evaporation of light petroleum materials, the roof is designed to float on the oil and move up and down with the fluid. However, the floating roof must be connected to the wall and sealed in order to prevent leakage of oil gases as well as the entry of rainwater, etc. into the oil. One of the mechanisms of sealing the roof is the mechanical shoe seal method, which is based on limiting the space between the roof and the wall with metal plates that are pressed to the wall by arms. These plates are attached to the roof by the primary sealing rubber. Under the seal, oil gases accumulate and it is not possible to easily spread out of that space. A weather shield which an insulating rubber is placed on top of it, is also installed to prevent dust or rainwater from entering the sealing space. The release of hydrocarbon gases from the side of the tank wall increases the potential for fire, even for non-repair reasons, such as the sudden discharge of static charge created on the floating roof. For this purpose, in order to prevent the accumulation of static charge on the floating roof, shunts have been installed to make the electrical connection between roof and the wall and to prevent sparks between them. The amount of gas leakage from the sealing mechanism should be checked by regular gas detector at regular intervals. In this sealing method, a mechanism is used to remove the accumulated gases from the tank wall, which is called rim vent valve, and depending on the dimensions of the tank and the characteristics of the oil, some of them are installed on the roof and near the wall of the tank. These valves have a flame retardant to prevent the further development of flames into the gas-filled sealing space, which is also in contact with the oil. Lightning and its effect on tanks. Now the causes of fire during lightning should be cleared. Few cases of direct lightning strikes on oil storage tanks have been reported in the world. In fact, in most cases of fire in this type of tanks, lightning strikes is not observed or even has no effect on the body of the tank. In this image, there is an oil tank in the night with only the light is visible. Suddenly, lightning strikes outside the camera frame and light up everywhere in a second. After about a second, the roof catches fire. This video shows that tank fires do not necessarily occur with direct lightning strikes. In cases where direct lightning strikes objects, the effect of lightning is observed in the form of burning or melting objects, including metal. But how does lightning form and strike the earth? During a storm, clouds become electrically charged for some reasons. Negative charges accumulate below the clouds and positive charges accumulate above them. Generating a negative charge at the bottom of the clouds induces a positive charge on the earth's surface and the space between the cloud and ground becomes an electric field.
Due to the potential difference between the negative charges accumulated at the bottom of the clouds, and the positive charges on the Earth's surface, between two suitable points of the Earth and the cloud, the attraction of positive and negative charges occurs towards each other and immediately negative charges, discharges on the ground. This electric current, which can be 2000 to 300,000 amperes, discharges to the ground in a fraction of a second, causing the clouds to discharge electrically. A large part of this electrical current moves into the ground and a small part of it moves on the ground to neutralize the induced positive charge, which is called the step voltage. The step voltage lasts until electrical discharge of the lightning. The range of step voltage is only a few meters up to 100 meters. Therefore, if the tank is at a maximum distance of 100 meters, where the lightning strikes the ground, it is likely that the step voltage electrons reach the tank wall before the clouds are completely discharged and the electrical current between the cloud and the ground is cut off. But if the tank is outside this radius, after the clouds are discharged and the induction field is lost, the electrons in the ground move towards the tank wall to neutralize the positive charges. Since in conductive object, electrical charges move a lot until the electrical potential become equal everywhere, the difference electrical conduction in wall and roof become important. The tank wall has a good conductivity due to the presence of earth wires and also the body contact with the ground. But the connection of the roof with the wall is done only with shunts. The weaker connection of the shunts and stronger electric field makes greater potential difference between them. In other words, in a very short time, a potential difference is created between the roof and the wall, and if there is a small distance between one of the shunts and the wall, the potential for spark formation will increase. The distance between the shunt and the wall can be caused by the frequent shaking of the floating roof and bending of the shunts or due to the adhesion of oil vapor to the wall. In the case of storage tank fires caused by lightning, two general scenarios can occur, direct lightning strike on the tank or no direct strike. In the first case direct impact due to the high intensity of the current, the likelihood of a fire is very high, depending on the presence of petroleum vapors or the lightness of the stored fluid, even with all safety precautions and standard design measures in place. However, existing evidence shows that most tank fires have occurred in the second scenario, where lightning did not strike the tank directly. In this accident, there was no evidence of a direct lightning strike on the tank. Therefore, the likelihood of the fire caused by an indirect lightning strike was higher. According to investigations, several factors contributed to the occurrence of this accident which will be discussed below. During the inspections of the storage tank, significant wall deformations were observed in several rows of steel plates. There was so much distortion in these rows that causes the effect of oil and gases to remain on the wall. This issue is clearly visible in the photos taken after the first accident. In fact, every time the tank is full and empty, these distortions cause more damage to metal seals and shunts and reduce their efficiency. In other words, due to these distortions, the distance between the metal seal and the wall increased and caused the volume of oil vapors emitted in those areas to increase. In addition to the deformation that caused the shunts to separate from the tank wall, the residual oil layer on the wall itself also led to a few millimeters of separation between the shunts and the wall. 
These two factors increased the potential for spark generation between the shunt and the wall. Therefore, the wall deformation of the tank which indicates poor construction and fabrication quality was likely the primary cause of the accident. This deformation led to two major consequences, first, an increase in the release of hydrocarbon vapors from the ceiling area, and second, a higher potential for spark generation in the shunts during lightning strikes. According to post-accident investigations, a malfunction in the implementation of the gas venting mechanism at the ceiling area was identified as another contributing factor to the accident. This issue can be analyzed from two aspects. The first involves a design or installation error by the tank manufacturer in positioning the pipe rim vent, which was placed unusually low contrary to standard practice. Typically, this vent path is designed to discharge gases from the rim space at a location away from the tank wall and the shunt area. However, as shown in the photo, due to the incorrect positioning, the oil level reached the vent pipe inlet, effectively blocking the gas flow from the rim space to the vent outlet. The second aspect was the absence of a rim vent valve at the time of the tank's construction and commissioning by the contractor. Furthermore, the flange intended for this valve was covered with a rubber plate. Due to these two issues, hydrocarbon vapors had no choice but to escape through the narrow gap between the metal seal and the tank wall. These vapors accumulated under the weather shield, then leaked out through its perforations and came into contact with the shunts. Deformation of the metal seals caused by wall distortion, the lack of a proper gas venting path from the ceiling area, and possibly the storage of light crude at the time of the accident all contributed to an increased volume of flammable vapors leaking from the floating roof ceiling space. On the other hand, the gap between the shunts and the tank wall likely also resulting from wall deformation created a site where a spark could be generated due to lightning. Ultimately, this led to ignition and fire in the tank. After the first accident, despite the operator's request for a complete overhaul, the tank was returned to service with only minor repairs such as replacement of the rubber seal due to operational necessity. As a result, the major repair work was postponed. However, since the metal seals had been damaged during the first accident, the leakage of hydrocarbon vapors increased. Additionally, with the shunts detached and the insulating rubber attached to the weather shield destroyed by fire, the likelihood of spark generation naturally increased. Although the rim vent valve was eventually installed, unfortunately, 16 months later, a second fire accident caused by lightning occurred in the same tank. Suggestions To prevent of such accident, several key measures must be taken into consideration. The first recommendation is the installation of bonding or bypass conductors, which have been advised by API Recommended Practice 545 since 2009 for all floating roof tanks located in lightning-prone areas. This mechanism replaces conventional shunts as the means of equalizing potential between the tank roof and shell, offering higher reliability and safety. It is therefore recommended that, when such bonding systems are in place, the shunts which can themselves become sources of ignition be removed. This ensures that no metallic component attached to the floating roof is in close proximity to the tank shell, eliminating the risk of spark formation in that hazardous zone. It is also worth noting that recent design standards recommend that, if shunts are used, they should be installed submerged in oil to minimize the risk of ignition. The next critical point is the control of hydrocarbon vapor leakage from the floating roof seal. If the concentration of leaked vapors exceeds the lower explosive limit, appropriate measures must be taken to eliminate the issue. The presence of such an ignition potential can lead to fire during various operational phases, such as maintenance, inspections, and more. 
In the event of a direct lightning strike, even a small amount of vapor leakage despite the presence of lightning protection systems can result in a fire. Therefore, it is essential to take storage tanks out of service at regular intervals for inspection and major repairs, based on notifications from supervisory units. Periodic inspections and preventive maintenance of all safety-related components including the floating roof seal, grounding system, gas detection instruments, roof-to-shell bonding, LHD cables, rim vents, and others must be carried out in accordance with API Standard 653. It is also recommended that the design of oil storage tanks be based on the latest technologies, focusing on root cause preventive factors, such as the type and material of the floating roof seal, control measures to enhance tank safety against lightning, as well as modern fire detection and suppression technologies. Adherence to quality control measures during the construction of storage tanks according to design drawings and applicable standards is mandatory. Finally, the deployment of advanced high-capacity fire suppression systems is essential, capable of controlling and extinguishing a full-surface fire across the entire tank area in the shortest possible time.